Okay, folks, come and grab a seat. And um, really lovely to see the reaction straight after, uh, like about 25 minutes ago when Tim said, go for it. Some of you are already out of your seat running. And, um, <laughs> and it looked like there was a lot of uh, buzz there and um, notes taken, meetings booked, etc. I did a few of those myself. Hey, so um, what's going to happen from now is Chris is going to kick in uh, through, to th through to four. All right, and uh, you'll see what that's project management community styles. And then the last half hour, 4 to 4.30, we'll be wrapping up and just thinking about tangibles, where to from here. What does it look like? Okay. So what I'll be aiming for, and this is what's in my mind, we've got 50 minutes to um, make the most of a focus on what we've, we've kind of penned project management community styles because there are a whole lot of ways that you can do project management. Uh, is there anyone in the room who is a PMP qualified project manager? Project management professionals, sort of you've, you've sat your big exam, your four hour multi-choice. No? Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you some insights. You might have done it back in the day, Chris. Pimp. Oh, yeah. yeah. Prince 2? Have we got any Prince 2s? Is anyone a member of the Project Management Institute of New Zealand? Is there anyone who considers that uh, sometimes they just manage projects as best they can with what they've got and who they've got around them? <laughs> cool. Right. So you're in the right place. Because if you, if you wanted the other stuff, um, no, there's another course that will be starting next month. Um, and I'll direct you that way. Uh, so what I've, um, what I've hashed together uh, right up until about two minutes ago, I've added on to this presentation because there was some uh, information that Alison shared about the, the match funding and then I went and had a close look at the one page application form that she had and there are basically four areas which are pretty straightforward and so I've framed them up in a way that may well be useful by the end of um, the time that we've got. There's another thing that I'm aware of that we didn't have last year with, with our, our group, and that was a group before them who had had 18 months worth of 12 months with Link and then six months doing what they're doing to get to this point, where we've got these 20 projects, which was about half of the group from last year. Um, so I want to recognise the reality that those 20 people um, have, they've got 12, they're 12 months ahead of you and there is absolutely no pressure on you having to do this in the next three months. Okay, you just, you start where you're at and you do what you're doing and we'll support you however we can. Right, exploring project management best practice to find useful and relevant stuff and I should be standing on the X, sorry about that, Alan. There we go. Useful and relevant stuff for a community setting. That's the technical word for just bundling everything together. Stuff. Now, this um, might be a bit of a riot of colour and words um, and kind of arrows and shapes. And we will spend a bit of time unpacking this. Uh, before we do that, though, um, I would like to show you just some insights into project management as a professional practice and what that looks like. Uh, so as Chris pointed out, yes, it's the, the PIMP exam. Uh, what we have here, I've got my pointer, so if I j I'll just use that one. The project management body of knowledge is a, a document, it's a, I think it's 630 pages. Uh, and it looks like the next few slides which I'm going to show you. And it might be really sexy and work for some of you, in which case, knock your socks off, go and do the exam. Um, if it doesn't work for you, um, then hopefully what we do between now and four o'clock will give you just enough to give you some structure, some processes. Hmm? You that one? Hey. Okay, sorry, I'm going this way. So just letting you know, there is an authority. Uh, this is known as PIMBOK. So in project management speak, that is the, the authority. This is version five. Uh, and 
one of the main differences between versions 5 and 4 is there, there is a new section recognising the, the importance of stakeholder engagement. And you could just stretch that out a little bit and say community and stakeholder engagement. So this massive body of uh, network, uh, which is globally, it's huge. They are now recognising the importance of engagement. And that's, that's a takeaway because it means things are, are coming together in the right way. Uh, this book here is the book you read in order to pass this book on your first attempt. So it's, um, it's an industry in, its, in itself. So this is the first of about half a dozen slides, and I don't want you to get into the detail. I just want you to see that um, we have these processes for phases or projects, a phase being a phase within a project. So you might have a three-phase project. And some of these link posters that we have, um, they identified, yeah, this is the, the initial bit that we need to do, and then there's, it becomes business as usual. It becomes operational and sustainable because it's awesome. And they proved it in the first phase. So each project has an initiating part, a planning part, an executing part, a monitoring and controlling process, and that goes right from the start to the finish. And the final bit is there's a closing part or a handover. And what I've noticed in communities is that something that starts as a project doesn't have an end. And in fact, a project needs to have an end. It needs to be unique. Um, and they're just two elements that define a project. Otherwise, it's a stream of work or it becomes an operational activity, which is not a project. So projects have a start and a, and a finish. A phase has a start and a finish. And in a more simplistic way, here's your start, here's your kickoff, you initiate it, there's aggravation, there's inspiration, things start, then you plan and you do. You plan, you do, you plan, you do, you plan, you do, you close and you finish or you hand over or there's a transition. All good so far? I'm only asking because it's the afternoon and I didn't see too many people eat sugar, in which case some of your sugar would be really high. And um, This adds on, so you've got that bit in the middle. This is showing that you, you have a person or people who initiate and that might be you or it might be two of you or it might be four of you. There was a group of four over here talking, with, uh, three with James and I thought, oh yeah, this will be interesting. So you have a person, you have a whole lot of stuff which goes into getting things started, then you do your plan do, finish, then you have these deliverables and records of what happens. So what have you delivered? What outputs? What results? And then, probably the real test, who's better off? And who, who has benefited from? And if you can articulate that in a, an accountability report or in a video made by Alan and his team, then that's kind of, that, that works. And what we've sort of woven into uh, our, our link processes is, is this reflective practice. So with the, um, with the mat, getting you to reflect on past, current, future, there are things that you are learning today that are going to serve you well uh, into you know, the, the future. Now this is an example of, of one of the chapters uh, in the um, PMBOK or PMP. You have a charter which is basically saying this is, this is what we're going to do uh, and, and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to collaborate. So essentially that's what's in your charter. Uh, and there's a list of them. So what are we going to do? What's the case? What's the evidence? What can we agree on as a, as a partnership? 
Um, enterprise environmental factors is a, is a technical term for all of the useful stuff that's happening around you. And the next one, organisational process assets, I can already hear some of you yawning, um, is what you've got within your organisation, your people, your resources, time. And how the normal flow of a, of a sort of a process happens here, you have your inputs, you have these tools and techniques, and the most important one, and you'll see this in Pimbok all the time, is expert judgment. That might be professional expert judgment, technical expert judgment, legal, financial. It might also be local knowledge and wisdom. People who uh, have lived in this place for four generations, they know stuff that no technical expert can know. And facilitation techniques, and one that Daisy and I worked through with you, which was a, a reasonably simplistic journey visual, so that's an example of a facilitation uh, technique. And then you have an output, and in this case, this is how you develop your project charter. Alternatively, a couple of you could get together in 10 minutes, just smash it out. Don't even try and read what's there. But what this shows is that this is the overall structure. So this is your entire project management. You've got initiating, planning, lots in planning, executing, so this is your doing bit, monitoring and controlling, and closing. Where is most of it? It's in the, it's in the planning. There's, um, there's a, some wise guy, um, actually it might have been a Japanese uh, proverb which is about you, you should plan, 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 do. Instead of plan, do, oh shit, better go back and do it again. Oh no, we're well behind now, we need to hurry up, you get it wrong. Does that make sense? So plan, make sure you've got everything right. If you're collaborating, let's take a step together. We're good, plan, we're good, we're good, let's go. And you launch from a really strong platform. And then there are all sorts of intricacies that come into integration. And I can see some of you just averting your eyes from the screen at the moment, because it looks like a scoop work program. Skirt has a stronger Christchurch infrastructure rebuild team. And this one uh, just goes into a level of detail on integration. The takeaway for integration, in my mind, is it's really resource intensive. So if you're going to collaborate, you really need to know we're going to invest time in this. We can't rush it. That's my oversimplification, maybe, of of integrated project management. You really need to dedicate and make sure you've got the right skills, knowledge, wisdom around the table. Nah, we'll just, nah. Right, let's go back to this one. So, any questions on the, on the project management stuff? Who, who thought, yeah, I'm gonna go and do that exam? <laughs> yeah, oh, I thought we had one. Yeah, the, the, the one thing with, with showing you those glimpses from the Pimbok is that they are uh, they're copyrighted. So in, in reality, I shouldn't do that, and I won't because I'm a member, but I would direct you to the Project Management Institute, and there's a Canterbury branch, and there are people every three months doing it. Oh, I don't know, I'll find out. I'll find out in the break when I get you working. I'll find that out too. <laughs> Who's got a library initiative going with? Uh... <laughs> okay, hey, there might be a project there to do some professional learning and development around projects, maybe. All right. Um, so let me explain what we've got on this visual, and just uh, at your tables, uh, and this might be easier for you to see. There is one 
piece of A1 flip chart paper and I've sellotaped to that one of those in black and white. What you should also have on each of your tables is one A3 each because what I found last year was everyone wanted a copy of this that they could take away. I will put this on Basecamp because if you want to print this out, um, blow it up, um, you, are, you are welcome to do so. Did you guys get the... Um, and there are some more here. So I just want to give you uh, just an overview on what, what we've got on that piece of paper. And I have got a piece of paper. I've got my one in it and it's in colour. And I've already added to it from this morning and earlier this afternoon. And I just wanted to let you know what some of the things I heard that I think improve on what we have here. And this came out of Forum 2 last year. So it's a work in progress. This is a living kind of framework. And let me just uh, try and help you understand what we have. So down the bottom in orange is what you'd probably extrapolate, extract from the PMBOK. And it starts on the left and it describes what a project is. And it's important to know what a project is and what it isn't. So a project is defined as a temporary group of related tasks to create a unique product, service, or result. It is time-bound, it is unique, and it has a clear purpose. So that's a project. So if it doesn't meet that definition, there's a question mark about whether it's a project or not. So just you, that's kind of a go-back to, that's a touchstone for you. There are a number of different projects and pro uh, project processes. So this is on the just in here. And these were the words that came out of the, the day last year, this time last year, and, and I've got some things I'd probably add to this now. But facilitation, choreography. There was quite a strong performing arts focus last year, and so people were seeing, actually, this is almost like a dance. And it was really capturing the imagination of, of some of our participants. It's, it's about caretaking, orchestration, being a servant, being a champion and a guardian. So someone shared this morning about kaitiaki and kaitiakitanga. So that's the guardianship. Being a sponsor and an owner. Projects, programs and portfolios. Uh, does anyone think they know what, what the difference is between those? So we know what a project is. Who's been involved in a program of activity? Basically a program is a series of projects that are related. And they all tie together, sometimes in sequence. A portfolio is where you have a bunch of different stuff that you do, and I heard a whole lot of portfolios when you came up with your half A1 bits of paper. So some of the projects seem to be related, but some of them were kind of random. Um, loved your one, Pip. Yeah. Then we've got um, project management methodology. So that PIMBOP uh, has 42 project management processes and some of those really nasty visuals showed you the integration of those 42 groups of processes. I'll move on to the triangle. It's important to understand that there is a basic triple constraint to any project. There is a scope, there is a budget, and there is a time frame. And if you mess with any of those three, scope, budget, time frame, the other two move. They have to. Or at least one of them has to move. And the, just on the, the right-hand side, you've got the, these are the, the groups of processes. So when I talk about the 42 different processes, there are nine groups. And I won't go into any more detail than that. If I come back over to this bottom left-hand corner, 
there's a whole lot of stuff going on in your worlds now, and that's kind of where that lives. That's where it sort of bubbles up from. And if you imagine superimposed across this visual, the mat, you kind of start down here. Where have I come from? Where am I at now as a, as a person? Up here is a whole bunch of stuff around where is my community come from? Where is my community at? And this is the space, the generative space, where ideas can just germinate. Boom, there's a wee seed, there's a gem. And going back to project management language, this is the initiating, this is the planning, this is the executing, this is the monitoring and controlling that happens, this is the close, and then we get these things that come out, they pop out. And if you've got a vision for the future for your community up in that top right hand corner, there are outcomes, shared outcomes, benefits that happen in that space. The one thing that came out really clearly from last year is that yes, that all makes sense, we need to initiate, we need some aggravation, ignition to get things going, and yes, we need to plan, uh, and we need to do stuff, but we, didn't, we don't like these words. We don't like the words monitoring and controlling. That's not community language. What we liked uh, are these words, noticing, listening, observing, sensing, relationships, whanaungatanga, influencing. So there were other words that resonated. And then all of a sudden that kind of, that makes more sense. Let's get together, let's plan, let's do it, and let's, let's just sense what's going on in our community. And the rest of it all sort of made, made sense. Okay, that's enough talk for me, that's 20 minutes. That's too much talk, especially at this hour. What I'd like to do is give you a few minutes to just consider around your tables, maybe use the A1 flip chart which has got the visual, and I'm keen to know your thoughts on actually what works, what works for us. And I, I've got an example, so you might have examples. Scribble your examples down. So sort of wrap your chairs around, and feel free to add your thoughts, just taking a few minutes, and then we'll come back. So what were the main points that you focused on? Were they visuals, were they areas within the model? Uh, yeah, what were you talking about? And I'll, I'll start over here and, and hand over the mic. Thanks, Kate. Um, we, we just really focused on one um, great example, so thanks Anne for that. Um, and we talked about in the uh, community setting um, really the importance of that initiating stage, the importance of stakeholder engagement and how you really can't miss that out. Um, you know, you can just about get away with it in a corporate setting where it's a very top-down hierarchical setting, doesn't actually, you know, work very well, but um, in a community setting it's absolutely critical. Um, and we also talked about with a uh, community setting, you know, the importance of getting the planning right and building evaluation into the process. So we're not, um, we're not leaving evaluation till the end. We're thinking about um, evaluation from a, a developmental perspective. So you're building that in all the way along. It's like an iterative process and you're amending, adapting um, as you go along. So those are the kind of key points for us. Thanks, Kate. Do you want to pass it over? And I think Jane's smiling on the inside, hearing that about evaluation <laughs> from the start. Mike. Uh, yeah, it's on me. I shouldn't have sat so close. Um, we talked about exactly the same. No, we didn't. We talked a little bit, actually, a little bit of the same about that process of when you evaluate and potentially not leaving it till after executing as well. And so sort of talked about whether that, that visual could be transferred into like a washing machine where it was less sort of perfectly cyclic and stuff got mixed around heaps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they've got like filters to get rid of your dirt and stuff and, and then how you separate your washes. Maybe a delicate wash for some situations because of the people around you. Um, we stopped there, we never talked about separating colours. Um, 
one of our group did, but we won't, we won't say who. We got them in line pretty quickly. Oh, God, it's late in the day. Um, the only other, oh, no, the other thing, that little tri the triangle, we, uh, we really like visuals, and that made a lot of sense to us, uh, putting it into a visual with the cost, the, what was it, the scope and the time. Um, and then the other thing we talked about is, um, initially we were sort of saying that maybe not all of this is necessary, but then if you were to have to obviously fill out accountability things or go to a big business for support, then it's obviously good practice to use similar language or, or go down this road to then transfer it for those reasons. Go on, take it. No, I hit you. Thanks, Nikki. Okay. Well, we, we sort of s stuck around in the middle here and um, agreed that the planning is most important. One of the things that came out from two of us, I, I guess, were the, s the importance of relationships within a project. And sometimes those relationships can be absolutely key and sometimes they can be absolutely damaging. So um, it, it can take you on a journey that maybe you're not expecting or that you hope for. Um, and we talked about health and safety too and how important that is becoming now. And more importantly, more constraints on one and one project that you might have done a few years ago when it was a looser sort of setting you wouldn't be able to do now. And um, that's quite important that, that this, all your staff are all involved in that as well. So that's key in, in your planning and your monitoring as you go. And that's the other thing I think, yes, evaluate and keep looking back and reviewing as you're going through the process. Reviewing you don't review just at the end, but you review all the way through. Stuff. Like with part of the project management course I went on for work and we're meant to do, I'm not technically a project manager, but part of what they talk about is that review process and they always say that you have, a, they, based on the length of your project, you put times against where you're going to do your review. So they'll say like a six monthly review of it's like a two year project. So you sort of take that quarter, then maybe halfway, three quarters of the way, sort of put you know lines in the sand as to where you're going to do your reviews so that you can look back so you can continue to go forward. Yeah. Carry on. Uh, yeah. Well, we weren't talking about that so much. Oh, we did. We wrote review down. We talked about quality being something which comes into the review process as well. Um, the idea that planning continues throughout the whole project is kind of an iterative thing, particularly if scope changes during the process, which scope can change. Um, and acknowledging that and going back to planning stages in the midst of um, scope changes. Oh, and the part of it was, which is good for me to hear, being an engineer, um, this whole idea of adaptive management. Um, I come from that whole controlling, monitoring side of things, but this idea of adaptive management was quite cool. Actually, I'll let you talk about it. Um. Well, I guess adaptive management is really a species thing because you can't control species like you can hope to control people. Um, and so <laughs> you can't plan for it as well as you can, I guess. Um, so um, I guess going back a step, when I started my project, we set outcomes. So that was our planning. Um, and that's actually the impact as well and the results. So we set what we're trying to achieve at the end and then we monitor to, for adaptive management to keep changing what we're doing with our execution. Um, and also, I didn't really like the box at the bottom, I just put engagement, because that's really the main thing, is the relationships that you build, and yeah. Okay. Did you go this one? Yes, yeah, stakeholder, yeah. Something else? I 
feel like most people have actually covered off what we've talked about, but we talked about um, the debriefing and the evaluation and how that's something that often gets missed in community groups when everyone's a volunteer and it's fluid and lots of people are changing. So that's one of the hardest things to do. Um, and in terms of monitoring and controlling, can be a bit more hard in volunteer groups as well when people are um, volunteers again and they're doing this on top of what they usually do um, and sort of, I guess you're it's just a balancing act of trying not to push people too far, but still that they're getting something out of it. Um, yeah, I think everything else has really been crossed off. Anything else to add? <laughs> Jeff, you're kind of in the central seat there. Uh, we had a bit of a chat about the it's a bit of a continuum there and the planning and executing from the, the structured, semi-structured um, to ad hoc iterative end. Um, community projects may be more at the ad hoc iterative end of the scale, it may be big IT projects at the, the formally structured ones, but everyone's got different skills and, and backgrounds and some people are better suited to the, the more formal way of doing things and some more informal way of doing them. So uh, just quickly, we talked about filtering the ideas in the first place and, and that there should be um, agreement on the purpose of the goal. We spoke about the old acronym of uh, SMART, uh, the specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and timely that a lot of you will have heard of, of course. In the planning stages, we talked about knowing exactly what resources you've got available in terms of volunteers, budget of course, the skills needed for that project um, and delegation. And then finally we talked about monitoring and control how people need to be accountable for certain tasks um, and have milestones and targets and the importance of reporting back and also acknowledgement um, of people for when they uh, have achieved certain things to keep them going. Um, there was no real mention of, um, you know, acknowledgement such an important thing I feel. Or we feel so. Well, thanks for your consideration of, of the model. And the, there are a number of things you've suggested. I can see going forward there's a, um, there are some adaptations, some additions to this. And the intention was just to really be a, a thought provoker for you, to get you thinking about, well, what are the projects I've been involved with and what did they look like? And d does this work against those? As a way of priming your thinking for uh, projects that you might end up collaborating on, or it might be one that you, you, you run yourself. Uh, and when I mentioned before about uh, what Alison mentioned in terms of the one pager, there are, there are four areas to be filled out in that one page application form, and, and these are the four. And so in a simplistic way, um, it starts with, well, what are your project outcomes? So going to some of you saying, actually, let's start with the end in mind, knowing that evaluation needs to be right through it. So what are your project outcomes? Then describing the project and the prompt that Alison's put in there is in 10 words or less. <laughs> when are you going to start? When are you going to end? If you think you know, because it, it may not be clear. Um, and the more dynamic and emergent a project is in terms of approach, well, good luck with trying to have a defined end goal, but you know, give it an indication. And then uh, what project budget and resources are you able to put in with your, uh, your network, with your partners, uh, and what funding uh, would you like uh, ideally? And then it's really easy. You just do the project, you review, you, you know, you plan, do, that's where the star is, and then you achieve, you close it, and you get these amazing outcomes. <laughs> so that star there, there's actually quite a bit in there. <laughs> but to simplify it, that's what is on the application form. And just trying to do some of the thinking for you and making the best use of the next seven minutes and we might not actually have time to do this justice. But with a, with a piece of paper, you could just fold it in half one way, fold it in half the other, and then you've got a nice framework. 
to put some initial thinking down, and that would prepare you for your application. James. Um, <laughs> Oh. Quantum. Yeah, so ballpark 2015, it was about $1,000 uh, per participant. Yeah, so just if you're thinking about that, um, that triangle, um, and I grabbed a rubber band because I hadn't thought about it this way until I spoke with this group over here. If you think about a rubber band, one finger being scope, the thumb being budget, and the other finger being time frame, if you stretch one of those, it's going to put pressure on the other two. And that's real. I mean, it's like if you've got a project and it's a two-year project and you've got funding for the first year and then you don't get any for the second, that kind of impacts on your budget and your resources, which will then impact on, on the scope and your time frame. So that was just an extension, rubber band. And so look, we've, we've got a few minutes. It's probably not enough time for us to really do justice to that. But that's, that's the framework. So if you're starting to think ahead, just to prime your thinking, what outcomes, you know, what benefits do I want for my community? Or do we want for our community? How can we describe it in an elevator that's going three floors, you know, 10 words or less? Oh, hi, what's your name? And what do you do? Oh, I've got a project, and it is, ding. <laughs> And it just happens to be a potential funder. Can you get your funding manager to fill out this form? Let's work as a team. Tony, Tony. Collaboration. Tony was saying before, what about delegation? Some people around the room are thinking, what the heck's a funding manager? <laughs> <laughs> And would you like to share your funding manager? <laughs> so how about we, um, we kind of we'll, we'll wind this little bit up here. Oh, we've got some extra time. OK. Well, look, let's take time. We've got uh, pads of paper up here. If you have had a conversation earlier in the afternoon with one or more people that you think, hmm, this could be an interesting exercise, no commitment past the next 10 minutes, to have a crack at setting some project outcomes, a description of 10 words or less, project start, finish, and actually you started doing this, I think, a little bit when you took on a case study. Who else was doing that? I saw another table that was working up a budget. No, okay. 10 minutes for you to use as you, as you like. Uh, it might be an individual thing, uh, but there, here's your framework. We'll leave that up on the projector. Yep. And if, if you, um, another option too is um, the bottom, no, the middle row of the mat. All right, so if this is a little bit too tangible yet, you're still just percolating. Um, just go back to the mat and spend the 10 minutes on the middle row there. Right, but either way, use this time to do some sort of, sort of synthesis of what you've heard. And then we're going to, about, about uh, 10 past, we're going to go towards um, wrapping up the day.